there's also an external imperative for reimagining. Let's change. So let me start this point on change by asking you another question. I'm giving you a very bounded question because otherwise this can get go haywire. But which of these sites do you visit the most? Google, Facebook, or YouTube? I'm prepared to take bets on the likely answer, but let's try. Google started off as search, but it's a lot more than that. Likewise, Yahoo, 
then you've got some other new ones. So the point is you have very significant changes taking place and they can change very fast. Malcolm Gladwell calls this confluence, this coming together of various strands of influence, the tipping point, where changes reach a crucial juncture or key moment which unifies isolated events into a significant crossroad. And he uses the metaphor of a virus becoming an epidemic when it reaches a critical mass. And it's quite interesting because he says it's the boiling point. It's the moment on the graph when the line starts to shoot straight upwards. And that's what you saw with Facebook, and that's what you see with many other phenomena like this. We live in a technological era, and it is very important to recognize that the impact of change is magnified by the technology that is all pervasive. Today we are highly connected, and information is shared at the click of a button. And that means that the multiplier effect of the phenomenon can be quite exceptional. Case in point, if I may give you an example. <laughs> I, I'm sure these are strangers to you, but anyway. Um, the story of Justin Bieber is quite well known, how he was discovered by his uh, eventual manager through the YouTube video, and also his uh, you know, usher, who also combined work with him. So it's quite a remarkable story. My daughter tells me there's this other one, Rebecca Black, a new video called Friday. <laughs> so you all know about it. I'm told, I'm told opinion is divided on this one. But it's interesting, you know. 152 million views. I checked it a couple of days back. I, I mean, I was thinking, what is this Friday song about? I must confess it didn't quite move me. But, um, <laughs> but, but but what struck me was 152 million views, 3 million dislikes, 400,000 likes. But whatever it is, she's made an impact as well. And why has she been able to do that if you think about it? It's because of this technology that is all pervasive. So let me ask you another question. What is your main source of news and information? There's newspapers and magazines, radio, television, or internet sources.
how in an era when information flies so fast and people are trying to get sound bites and tweets out as quickly as they can and connect with their friend, how quickly something can be distorted. And this took all of eight minutes or so. I think the first tweet was at 11.17, so it's about 11 minutes. So in 10 minutes, a photo shoot became a, a gunman on Washington Street. Right? Admittedly, this is an exaggerated example. But why do I raise this? Because as citizens of the cyber world, we understand that technology can magnify the impact of phenomena. And we need to be discerning users of technology and also the information that it provides. Just because it is easy to share something with a click of a button, that does not, in a sense, give us the freedom then to say we do not apply the usual filters of probity or prudence on what we are clicking in the past. Whatever we would apply to the real world, the way we do things, we should equally think about this when we are using cyber tools and purveying cyber information. That is the crux of it. Because I know that we have a sale with information from a variety of sources. We have many mechanisms by which to access them. So the burden is far greater on this generation and future generations, precisely because of the kind of information access that you have. Information and one could argue misinformation access as well.